Hooray, I got this working. I had the vertical video problem again. Hi, I'm Angelo. I've been homeless in Northern Virginia for five months now. I just quit my job a month ago, actually. And I am here with my 2005 Honda Civic. I'll turn the camera around. I am uh, experiencing problems with the car overheating. That's really not good. Uh, it can damage the engine really badly and I am trying to get this car ready to drive to Los Angeles. So I'm going to wait a few minutes for people to come here and then I'm going to show you how uh, I deal with this problem and um, what I suspect the issue is and uh, it's going to involve uh, some radiator fluid or coolant so it's mixed with water and you make sure your car is cool. Do not open the radiator cap while it's hot. Otherwise, uh, the hot radi the coolant will just come out into your face like steam. That's not good. Got my coolant here. Now make sure you have the right coolant when you do this. So for my car, it uses the green coolant. It's an older car. Newer ones, they might use the orange. Um, and I've heard, like, I forget which way it works. Like, I think some newer ones can, well, I don't want to speculate. They might be able to take the old kind. I'm not sure. And ones like this one that I got say that you can put them in any car. I just stick to the color that's right for my car. So this one's green anyways. And it's a 50-50 mix of coolant and water. So I'll wait till a few people come here and then I'm going to show you. And also, I'll show you something else. I... Look how nice those headlights look. They had some yellow, you know, like film on them before. All I did is it, it, I got rubbing compound. Well, I still had it from a few months ago. And I put it uh, on there. I had some time the other night. Just got some of this uh, blue paper towels I got from an auto parts store. Wipe it on there. I cleaned them first. Got some dirt off there. Clean, wiped them on there. And when you wipe them off, all that yellow comes right off. So now these headlights are so bright. That's really important for your safety. You want people to be able to see you as well as you to be able to see other people. Some of the uh, rubbing compounds still on there, but what are you going to do? Oh, and the car is still is not starting right. Um, I got the starter relay. I, I don't know if I it in myself, so I'm waiting for the mad scientist to help me with that. So, uh, this whole process, it can take like an hour to get your car cooled. Uh, you know to the radiator working so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get air out of the radiator that might be in there uh, which is preventing the coolant from going through the whole engine or something I don't totally understand it but I'm going to um, take the radiator cap off right there I'm going to leave the car here run the engine uh, I'm going to put it uh, hey uh, hey everybody thanks for joining so I'm going to get the air out of the radiator. I actually did this earlier for about 45 minutes, so that's really good. There was a lot of air in there, and it turned out this car needed a lot more coolant. You can't really tell when you just pour it down, and then you think it's full. So it turns out, you know, you got it. That's why it's called burping the radiator. It means I'm going to take the radiator cap off. Great. Did I flip the camera twice? Yep, I accidentally flipped it. So I'm going to take the radio cap off. My car is cool. I've got my coolant right here. I had to buy a new carton of it. And what I'm going to do, take this off. You can do it better than what I, the way I'm doing it. If you get a funnel like a, that spill proof or whatever, I don't bother with all that crap. Just, uh, I put the coolant in there, you take this off, and then you just run the engine and uh oh and i'll show you something else you do with the engine to or with the settings because um apparently you want the car to be moving the coolant throughout the engine so that you really get all the air out and actually damn eh, it's not too bad the car is on a level it's not really a level surface i think it's like slightly downhill it's better if the front of the car is elevated but uh, I don't really feel like doing that. And then if I drive it around, I can't open it for a little bit because I got to make sure the coolant's not hot. Otherwise, when you open this, it's going to burst out super hot, scald you. So the other thing I'm going to do, and it's already done, is uh, have the heat 
the temperature, the way people explain it, it's so dumb. They say, like, have turn the heat all the way up, but have the fan off. It's like, what, what the hell does that mean? So the heat's not up? All they mean is set the temperature for the heat, the air, up, but leave the fan off. That apparently, it helps open up whatever is something that's going to get the coolant to run throughout the car. And also, you may want to press on the gas a little bit. Uh, gas pedal to get it up to 2500 rpm because that'll get the uh, something some other fan going in the car and it helps basically all you're trying to do is get air out of the radiator you're trying to burp it so get this air out which is pr <laughs> stupid camera camera's frozen okay you're you're trying there you're trying to pull the air out so that ah, video freezes. I don't bother with all that crap. Let's just do this. Let's get started. Now, starting my car is not... Okay, first of all, I forgot. First thing. Come on. Come on. Camera's not going. There. My goodness, it takes forever. This is cool. I've been here for a while. So take the radiator cap off. To start my car, I have to jump start it. So this is a little tedious. I clean the floor mat. No, it's still bad looking. So I have my cable that I'm going to use to jump start it. Again, the heat, the temperature is set all the way up, but the fan is off. So I'm not actually going to run the heat. Apparently that helps with uh, something. I may as well get my battery back up. Well, I'll wait for that. I'll wait. All right, so I got to get the key out. I hurt my finger, clipped the nail too short, and then dug my finger into something by accident. All right, so to start my car, it's not going to start. Just with this, the ignition's disconnected. I got to uh, get the mad scientist on that. All right, so I have to... And again, this is going to take... I don't know if I'll do it the whole hour. I did this earlier today, but I know I could afford to do it again. This could take about an hour if you're doing it, and you might want to have heard. So I have to connect this wire from the starter terminal, that white circle down there. There. You're not going to be able to see it. Oh, damn it. Click like everybody that helps the video do well. And I'm getting red this car ready to go to Los Angeles. If you can believe that. Okay. Let's see if that works. Nope. Damn. It's like an optical illusion. I can't really see if the cable's touching. There we go, and I touched that to the positive battery terminal. All right. So again, the temperature is set all the way to the, uh, hot, but it's not the fan's not turned on. Apparently, that helps with uh, getting the engine to put the coolant all through the car. I've got my gloves here in case this gets messy. Oh, and there's another thing I want the gloves for. So, here we go. I'm going to start. They say have a funnel for all this. I don't bother with all that fancy crap. I'll just go ahead and do it by sight. Okay. I'm just going to put a little bit because I don't have a funnel. The problem is it's going to rise up. And you don't want it going on the ground. That's a hazard for animals. You don't want to waste it. It costs a lot of money.
Now, see, I filled a lot. I filled this up earlier. Okay, I'm not going to put too much. Now, if you had a, a funnel, you can put more because it's going to go down. See what's going to happen? You see the bubbles coming out? And the reason I'm going to have the glow is something else you can do to get the bubbles out. And again, they say have a funnel because put more coolant in there, like a no-spill funnel. And that way it'll keep going down and it can go up. You see how it's going up now? You don't really want... See, the air is coming out. That's good. Now what you can do... Again, click like, everybody. Helps the uh, videos uh, keep going. I'll wait because I don't want to do this yet. All right, back. I, I, these are the radiator hoses right here. You can squeeze these, see, and get some of that gas out. I'm not trying to do it too much. I don't want to spill all this coolant. You all having fun yet? My allergies have been acting up bad. I had to bite the bullet and spend about uh, like 35 bucks on uh, Claritin, a 70 pack of them. Sucks. Uh, it's getting a little high. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just turn the heat on just the first notch, and that helps it go down. And uh, it might help with um, the burping process. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, it's not really helping. And the idea is, too, you want to get the temperature of the car all the way up. Or all the way up to the, you know, where it's going to go. Great. Oh, well. Okay, just gonna wait a little bit for this. Again, this is really important because when the air is trapped in there, I'll turn off the heat. It smells good with that air freshener. When the air is trapped in there, the coolant doesn't properly cool the car. And that's really bad. If So oh, this is good. You got to and I did this for about 45 minutes earlier today. And it still has air in there. So, just got to do it. And with Hondas, it's important to do. And um, after you do any kind of work on the coolant or radiator, replace the radiator, I've heard or change the thermostat, I've heard it's important to do this. So, I'm learning about this too. But uh, click like everybody helps the video get going. And I'm uh, things are light by the way. Okay. So, while we're just waiting on that and um, I'm going to uh, squeeze the radiator hose in a little bit. While I'm looking at that, um, I'll let everybody know that uh, the trip to LA is lining up. I'm uh, scheduling everything, figuring out my figuring out my finances, um, lining up all the elements. So this is still, and again, I'll show you. the glove because this can get kind of hot S squeeze the radiator hose see it helps I don't want to do it much now because that's why it's good to have a funnel here I got some of the uh, rubbing compound on my glove but it's good to have the funnel because you can have more coolant in there for when it comes up and it'll go back down but um, yeah, I'm not trying to spill it but you can squeeze this hose get some of that air out And again, I already did this earlier today for like 45 minutes. Hey, everybody, seven people here. Click the like button. Helps the video get going because I am trying to go to Los Angeles. And we're going to be here for a little bit. 
and this is important to keep the car from overheating, uh, especially on Hondas. It's a big problem. It happens to a lot of Hondas. So one thing I didn't do here, the, the ground's kind of flat. It's actually tilted down a little bit. I've heard it's good to have your car with the front end up a hill, uh, an incline, because the air rises up and that makes it easier, but whatever. I didn't want to drive somewhere to do it because then the engine will heat up and then I can't open the radiator because the coolant is going to get very hot and it's going to burst out, you know, right on me and scald me. So I would have to wait for it to cool down. I was like, ah, I don't want to wait. I'll just go ahead and do this now where I am. Did any bubbles come out recently? Yeah, there we go. So another thing I can do to get this going faster, I'll show you. This is what I've heard. Again, so this is really good. Temperature is not going up higher than it should. Um, see the RPMs there? I'm going to press on the gas and just get it up to like 2,500 RPM for a little bit. I've heard this helps like the engine, you know, whatever. Uh, it's hard to keep it steady. There we go. Let's get it. Um, how's everybody doing? Click the like button, everybody. Helps the uh, channel out. Gonna have to get an oil change soon. There we go. That's better. All right. That's good. That's going to heat it up fast. My allergies are acting up. And, uh, turn the camera around. Why the hell doesn't it turn around? Again, I'm getting ready to go to Los Angeles. Things are lining up. Getting my dates worked out, finances in order, making sure the car is working all right. Now, look at this. Look what happened here. See, it's going down. So now it's easier to glove on and even though I filled this up earlier again you see it goes down and uh, whatever happens and the air gets out or something so I don't know what the hell's going on but this is kind of warm so squeeze the radiator hose help get some of that air out of there you can see it coming out try not to breathe those fumes in And without hurting myself, squeeze that one down there. All right, that wire is warm. Okay, just gonna do that for a little bit and then I'll put some more coolant in there. But I'm not trying to put much because I know for whatever reason it rises up and I don't understand how all this stuff works. Worked out hard at the gym today because I didn't go for two days. I got up too late and I was like, well, it's terrible when I start my day late and then I don't uh, have time for much other stuff and then I go to bed late again. So I skipped it for two days. Rewrote the outline again on my screenplay. I was so worried I wouldn't have it in me to write another outline and prove it. I think it is improved and connecting better the story. And I wanted to go to writers groups when I'm in Los Angeles and get feedback from writers, especially professionals if I need any there. Okay, let's put some more coolant in. Just a little bit. I can't get a good angle. There we 
go, not too much, because I know it rises. But see how much more it could take? And I've heard you don't want to fill it up too much, especially in that, that second one, that reservoir or whatever. I filled it up too high before, because um, that can mess it up too. So hopefully I didn't mess all this up too bad. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and squeeze the radiator hoses again. Oh, son of a... Oh, okay. I was scared the screen changed on my phone. It said rotate device. And my, you know, reflexes kicked in. Squeezing this one, this hose too. Trying to get that air out of there. Hey Lynx, so, okay. Basically the car's been overheating and this is an issue common with Hondas. Uh, for one thing, it didn't have enough coolant and even though I keep thinking I fill it up, I've never properly burped the radiator. And what that means is get all the air out of the radiator, which keeps the coolant from going into the engine and everything. So what I did first, I made sure the car was on a basically a level surface I made sure the engine was cool. I, I got out of the car for a few hours, set the heat, the temperature up, but the car will not have the fan running. So you see the temperature is set to hot, but the fan is off. And then what I did, and I did this earlier today too for 45 minutes, because there's a lot of air in this radiator. It's common with Hondas. Took the radiator cap off, put a bunch of coolant in. You're supposed to have a funnel so it can go up because when you pour the coolant in, it rises up for whatever reason. And uh, I don't bother with all that crap, so I'm doing it a little bit slower. And what's happening now, bubbles are coming out from the cool from the radiator, out the coolant. And uh, I just keep doing this. I did it earlier today, put a bunch of coolant in, because my car was overheating. And if that happens, you can damage your engine badly. And that might have been what happened when my engine failed last summer. And I spent like 500 bucks to fix it. Here's the radiator hose, so you can squeeze that, and you can sort of see the coolant reacting to it to get some of the air out. And there's another radiator hose down there. It's a little bit awkward to grab without hurting myself. And it can get a little hot, so that's why I'm wearing the gloves. Also, check this out. I, I restored my headlights again last night. Look how beautiful they look, how sharp and clear. I use rubbing compound for that, for that, $6 from Home Depot. I just put a little water first on the headlights, got off some of the dirt on there, wiped it off, dried them, and then put this rubbing compound with wet paper towels on there, rub it on real hard, it dries quickly. So you gotta only do it after like a minute or two and keep putting more on to keep it, uh, you know, uh, damp. And then just wipe it off, and when you wipe it off, all this yellow film comes off it. And so now it's so clear. And I've done this like three times in the last like two or three months. or th Yeah, maybe three months or so. Or four months. And it, uh, yeah, thanks. Like the video, everybody. And now they're very clear. And I'm doing that partly because, you know, I want to be safe. People got to see me. I want to be able to see the road well when I'm driving. But the other thing is, you know, I'm driving through states. I don't know what their regulations are on headlights. I don't want you know, uh, any police to be able to say, well, your headlights aren't bright enough. It, you know, violates our safety standards or something, whatever. I don't think that'll happen, but that's really more if you get your car inspected and that happens. But yeah, you got to get the air out your radiator. So that's, this is called burping it. I did it 45 minutes or so earlier today and I'm doing it again because I know Hondas can require that. I'm going to go ahead and put some more coolant in now. I wouldn't have to do this if I had a good funnel. I do have a funnel, but it's not a spill proof one. So, I'm not going to bother with all that. Just put a little bit. There's already a good amount in there. You see how much more it can take? Isn't that amazing? I thought it was full like five times by now. And that's... That's the... Uh, Coolant going down, some of it's burning off, you can see, but, and that's also the air bubbles 
coming out. Don't want to fill it up too much because it will rise and then spill and that can be a hazard for animals like pets walking through. You don't want that. And you don't want to waste it. Now another thing you can do, and I'll do it now, is, let me get this out of the way in case someone parks here. And by the way, the trip to El Los Angeles is coming together. I'm talking to people, I'm planning stuff, planning my, my locations where I'm going to be. Another thing you can do, and again, I have the, for whatever reason, it's like this will help open up the engine to take in the coolant and get the fan running on the engine. Have the temperature set high, but the fan off. This is so ridiculous. Every video, they don't know how to communicate stuff. They say, have the heat set all the way high. Well, when you say that, people automatically assume you've got the heat running. No, you don't have the heat high. Just set the temperature high. The fan is off, so you're not running the AC. You just have the temperature knob set high. And what I'm going to do, just press the gas pedal a little bit. I've heard this helps. Get the RPM up to like 2,500. And that will help uh, somehow get something activated in the engine, the fan running and everything, or so, I don't know. And that'll help get the coolant going through the engine and basically burp out more air. So it's a little tricky. There we go. Well, it's hard to keep it right around there. There we go. So I'll just keep it there. And look, the temperature's good. It's not overheating. So that's really important. Click like everybody. This is this is news you can use. This is very helpful. All right. I could do it longer, but I'm going to leave it. Also, I'm going to try just uh running the heat for a little bit, just one notch. I, I saw in some video you can do that, it helps. Uh, look, I'm not a mechanic. I don't understand all these processes intricately. All I know is I just do what you know they say. So still again, air coming out of there, air bubbles. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat off. I just wanted to do that real quick. I don't think it's real entirely necessary. It smells good with that the heat going through that air freshener. Those ones are really effective. Better than those little trees you hang from your whatever. And also those trees, that can cops can consider that illegal if it's like they considered an obstruction on your view. Okay. Again, this is why having a spill-proof funnel is good. You can just pour it in there and let it go down and at the end collect it all and put it back in the coolant can. But I'm just doing it the kind of backwards way. Look how much more coolant it could take. See? You thought it was full before. Isn't that amazing? Look how much more I'm using of this. It's almost like a quarter a quarter drained. And I filled up from some of the last uh, canister I had. Now see, the bubbles are still coming out. Now that's partly because I just filled it up, so it's going to happen every time, but this is why you let it run for like an hour and just let the bubbles come out. That's what's called burping the radiator. That's what it means. Yeah, it takes so much more. And I'm really glad I'm doing this now because it's going to be very important that my car run well when I'm driving, and especially what happens apparently with Hondas and definitely with my car, when I drive it around for a while and then I'm like at a red light, that, that's when the car overheats really badly. For whatever reason, the coolant doesn't get sucked through to the engine. And so that is a big disaster. So think about it. If I'm driving somewhere and I'm stuck in traffic, if I hit rush hour and all of a sudden my car is overheating really badly, that could destroy the engine. Excuse me. So I want to make sure I am good to go. Also, I got the starter relay. I'll show you that. I finally got it from the Honda dealer. It was only like 17 bucks. Hold on. Ugh. I had to spend like $35 on Claritin today. It sucks because I finally gave in and got a 70 tablet pack of Claritin for my allergies. This is the part that 
I'm waiting on my mad scientist friend to tell me, or to put in. I don't know how to do it. I don't want to try it without his help. Got some fuses for my trip in case the fuses go bad. I don't even know how to put those in. Come on, where is it? Starter relay. This is it right here. This is a little thing that I that my friend says I need. I hope he's right. You can see it's got four prongs. It goes underneath the dashboard right in front of me, where the driver's side is. And that's apparently bad in my car. He he thinks he isolated it to that, and that's why the car is not starting right. Hey Agrippa. Hey Yvonne. The concussion photo. That's, that's something for, like I said, I was auditioning for something. Wait till I get to Los Angeles. I got a lot planned there. That's why I gotta make sure this car is in good order. My head still hurts from that. And it wasn't necessary to fall that hard. I was worried the person who was seeing it would be like, oh, Angelo can't take a real fall, so that's why I fell hard. I didn't bang my head on the ground. I banged my shoulders and back and my head shook. So at least I didn't get a head wound. Just brain damage. All right. So still burping this, it's going down, that's good. But you see how much radiator fluid, how much coolant this can take. And before, it was, it must have been very low because I could keep filling this up, keep filling this up, and there's still space for more. And there was all this air in the radiator. That's bad, that was probably the cause of why it wasn't cooling. You might have other reasons for this, but for me, uh, many people, that's gonna for with uh, many people with Hondas. That's what's gonna be the issue. Thanks. Yeah. Well, Agrippa, I know you're in Portugal. I'm not in Annandale actually right now. I'm a few miles from there, but uh, real close by. Yeah, my head still kind of hurts. It sucks. So next time I'm like I, I don't have to make the fall look that power like that strong. I can fake the fall a little bit. But yeah, wait till. I'm in Los Angeles. You guys are going to be excited. Like I said, I'm planning stuff, dealing with people, talking to them, figuring out which areas I'm going to stay in because I didn't know. I'm like, well, I'm just looking around for whatever. Yeah, my head still hurts a little bit. <laughs> All right, so still burping this, by the way. So if you missed it, I restored the headlights again. This is awesome. Look how shine, look how crystal clear they are. This is better than like 80% of cars on the road because nobody bothers to do it. They think you got to get those crappy rain. Oh wait, got to change the camera. Those crappy Rain-X kits that cost like twenty-five dollars. They're like this big, and then you, after one use, they're filthy, and you can't use them anymore. Oh, excuse me. Actually, I'll show you what I use right now, and I'll show you something else in my trunk. I don't know if I'm gonna maintain these, but what I did in order to sleep in my car, I was like, well, the the problem with the, um, I use sun visors, I put sun visors in the windows, it's so obvious, like, and they don't look that good, they don't cover up the windows perfectly, so what I did, I have these cardboard, you can kind of tell, right, like, these pieces of cardboard I got from the trash, I put them up at the windows, cut them out, so they're a little bit bigger than the windows, and you got to kind of tuck them into the windows, spray painted them black, this way I can put them up and no one will be able to see inside the car. The bad thing is it's gonna be kind of a hassle to put these in. Think about it, I gotta do it every night I sleep, click like everybody, 13 people here. Help keep the videos going, help get me to Los Angeles. So I have these, um, I haven't put them in yet, maybe I'll try them tonight and just see, it's, it's gonna be kind of a lot of work, put these in each night, take them out. But at least this way nobody can see into my car because if it's night, you know, they're not going to think, oh, something's blocking out the car. They'll just think, oh, it's really dark inside. I can't see in the car. So that's important. I don't want it to be super obvious, um, especially in Los Angeles, where apparently, you know, the police are out ticketing people and you see his big sun visor in the window. I'll have it in the front, not on the side. So I got all these for all the windows in the car that I held up there, cut out, spray painted. Now, here's what I did with the... Um, uh, what is it? 
I use these paper towels. I don't know what they're called. You can get them in. Uh, these got wet so many times, but they're good now. They're dry. Um, paper towels from an auto parts store. And this stuff. Polishing compound. This stuff is so great. It was $6. And you got to be careful. I'll just show you all it is. It's just a little cream. Almost looks like cottage cheese. That's what's on these gloves. And just dip the paper towel. Well, first of all, wipe down the headlights with water. Get the first layer of dirt off there. Oh, don't fall. That's all it is. You just dab it in there, wipe it on, scrub furiously, and then wipe it off. And when you wipe it off, the whole layer of yellow, um, the film, the dirt that's on these windows comes off. So that's great. I got to use a moist wipe on my hand. I'm going through moist wipes like crazy. So it's all spending, you know, it's all costing me, but I got these from Aldi, a three pack for a few bucks. These are good. I don't trust that uh, Dollar Tree moist wipes. They rip up as soon as you take them out of the pack, basically. So making sure I'm ready for Los Angeles, making sure my car cool down I wiped down by the way I have automotive wipes I forgot where I got them looks great you know I wiped everything down I wiped down again with rain -X, the window because the condensation from when I sleep got on there uh, so man my head is still hurting yeah uh, basically yeah as soon as the mad scientist installs it well I'm not gonna go straight to Los Angeles yeah fake the fall I know um, unless I go to Los Angeles right away. It's not going to be that quick. I'm waiting basically till the end of the month. Know what my bills are. Make sure everything's ready. Damn my head. Every time I move my head a lot, it hurts. But, uh-oh. Now, see, this is going back up. I wonder what that's about. Maybe, uh, here, I'm going to... I don't want that. So maybe I'll just hit the gas again. And I got to get an oil change, too. So... Again, I'll rev it up to like 2,500 RPM. I think that'll get it Oops. going back into the engine. Because it'll get the engine to click on the fan or whatever. I forget how it all works. Fourteen people here. Click like, everybody. By the way, did you all see Nathan Barnott's video I posted on my uh, community page? His new Trey Luaus commercial. I love Trey Luaus. He hasn't done a video of that character in years. And uh, he did one for Chili's because he went there and drank on a live stream, which YouTube does not save if you make them over like 12 hours long, I guess. So if you have a live stream that's over 12 hours, YouTube won't save it, so it disappears. So you can't even see that live stream where he and his friends live streamed from like a haunted boat for like over 24 hours and they went to Chili's and Nathan drank uh, alcohol. Yeah, but check out Nathan Barnott's channel. Oh my fucking head. Okay, see now it went down, so that's good. Oh, smoke, I don't want to breathe in those fumes. And again, if you miss it with the glove, I'll use the glove on the radiator hoses right there. You can squeeze the radiator hose and get some, it's a little hot, but it's not too hot, and get some of that air out. Hold in my breath. How long have I been doing that? Oh. Oh, shit. See a bunch of damn coolant spilled over. Damn it. I think maybe when I was um, putting the, uh, whoa, putting the gas pedal down, I think it was, oh, shit. 
overflowing it? What do you think? Might have been overflowing it. Ah, oh, damn it. I regret that. Well, what should I do? Get those paper towels and wipe it up? Yeah, I should do that. Yeah, there's no way I'd want to go to Los Angeles without a car. Forget that. And it looks like it only cost about like $200 for gas to get there. So that's pretty good. Hey Matt, thanks for joining. Yeah, I guess it overflowed when I hit the gas, I don't know. Okay, so I'll pour in some fluid fluid one more time. But, uh, and I better put one more paper towel down. But, um, I've been going, what, for like, uh, minutes or so? And, um... Uh, burping the car. Oh, and so the thing about these cardboard, I don't know if I'm really going to use it. I might try it tonight. If it's too inconvenient to put these in the windows, so that's good. Look, it's all blacked out. Then um, what I'll do is I'll just buy some blackout curtains and figure out some way to fasten them. Blackout curtains and then put them like somehow them here. I don't know if I have to um, put Velcro or whatever is easy. Thumbtacks, if those will work. I have thumbtacks. If they'll go through here, this is firm. And uh, uh, just hang up blackout curtains because that might be a lot less work. Okay, I'll try this one more time. Okay, I'll try pouring some more coolant in. And I think that'll be the last time I do it. I already burped the car earlier today for like 45 minutes. <sighs> Let's see how it goes. If I need to do this again another day, I will. Really, the spray paint can mess up the car? Well, the thing is I'll only have it on the windows at night. So hopefully it won't be too hot. But yeah, that, that is another thing I was wondering about because it did smell a lot. It smelled on my hands after I was done, even though I used gloves to spray it. So yeah, I do wonder, like, is it, am I just better off having the blackout curtains? Oh, see, now the fan or whatever, something else is clicking on in the car. That's good. Right, yeah, Lynx, I know. Should I put more coolant in? What do you think? I'll uh, squeeze the radiator hose some more. Get some more of that air out. holding my breath while I do that. Click like everybody, seven likes, pretty cool. Okay, so I'm getting the air out of the rear. Getting the air out of the radiator and one way to help with that is squeeze the radiator hose.
Radiator hose is getting a little hot, but it's not too bad with the glove. What do you think? Is that enough or should I time? I did this all twice today. I'm thinking it might be enough. Wow, one dollar from R9333. 333. Yes, everybody can donate a dollar. By the way, that's a lot more st stability for me than if one person tries to donate a dollar. Oh, the reservoir tape. Well, I have a lot of coolant in there, so uh, I might have too much. Actually, it is pretty full. Yeah, it's really full. So, um, yeah, I don't know if I uh, put too much then or whatever. I won't put any more then. That's plenty, I think. And I'll just let this run for a few more minutes. I got my uh, paper towels to clean up the mess. It's a little hard to get to. Click like everybody, get this top of YouTube. This is a tip. And it's part of a historic voyage for me to Los Angeles. Here I threw away the old one I filled up. I emptied that earlier today. Just let that go for a few minutes. I'll put this in the trunk. See, heat's good. It's not overheating. Now, it won't necessarily, it's hard to, you know, it's unpredictable how, if it will overheat, it might only do that after I'm driving around for a while. And, and then I idle, like if I'm at a red light or I'm in a lot of traffic. So we'll see how this all works out. And it also, it's, it's a hassle to store because it's like, where am I going to put it here every night? I don't know. It's not really going to fit anywhere in there easily without being a huge hassle. No more coolant. Okay, yeah, good. No, I don't speak Greek. I speak Spanish pretty well. All right, I gotta blow my nose. I'm not gonna show it. I'm happy I got, I did a rewrite of my screenplay, well, the outline today. I don't know how I say it. So I was really glad. I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I don't know if I'll have the sharpness with me today. I got hit in the head. I've had all kinds of intrusive thoughts lately. Sorry. I'm getting out some food. And I was hungry today. After I worked out, I, I lifted weights and ran for a total of like, I don't know, it was a while. I, I must have worked out over 90 minutes. So by the end of it, I was pretty much like, uh, you know, done. I was fatigued. Some more peanut butter out and I'll just wait for the car to burp a while so yeah it's still I mean oh sorry looks like there's still air I can't really tell if it's just that vibration but it won't hurt to just keep it burping Thank you again, R9000, Era 9000, for that 
donation. All right, I'm going to wipe my hands again. Can't be too careful. Actually, what the hell? I'm not going to eat the peanut butter with my hands. I use forks because I don't really use forks for anything, so at least I'll have some. Uh, I'll use them. Actually, I should save them in case I do need them. Because now all I have are spoons. Skippy peanut butter. Got this from the food pantry. Oh, that is creamy. Thanks for joining everybody. 14 people here. What do you mean, what's my point? Ra oh, talking to someone else? I don't know who you're talking to. Good peanut butter. I try not to eat much peanut butter because it is very high in calories and it can mess up your stomach, but I barely ate today and I can feel my body like leaching, the, you know, from my organs and muscles and everything because I worked out so hard. I did a lot of extra sets today. And I kept it focused, on point. I wasn't wasting time. And I ran like... I don't run that much, but... Ran like half a mile on a treadmill at a decent speed. Oh, why aren't people here? I don't know. This is how it goes. Did someone donate? I didn't see it. Oh, another dollar. From R9000. Thank you, R9000. My head is still hurting from falling yesterday. Video no one will see. Little audition video. Funny thing is, I didn't even need to do it. I just thought, well, I better show this guy I want to work with that I'm really serious about wanting to do this and just wait till I get to Los Angeles you'll see I'm gonna need an oil change before I go there All right, that's enough and hopefully it all works out Hopefully the videos do well. I meet lots of people. Go to writers groups. I will have another piece of this tomato basil bread from Panera Bread. Also from the food pantry. Damn good bread. Try not to touch it with my hands because I've been working with the engine and the antifreeze. Hoping the Claritin for my allergies kicks in soon. It always takes a few days.
All right, let's take a look at the... Ugh, I just farted. I just burped my own self at the other end. Damn, and the phone's not really charging. I don't know what it is. It's, um, it's getting hot, for one thing. I'll take the case off. But I got the portable charger plugged in. But still losing a charge pretty quickly. No, not updating the apps. That's one thing that doesn't help. I should have... You gotta update the apps like every other day on these phones. And these phones got a mind of their own. Uh, yeah, I have lost some weight. Thanks. I don't want to get too close to fumes. Once again, R9000, Era Nueve Mil. I'm thinking about, by the way, doing another uh, donations, for, translations for donations marathon live stream before I go to Los Angeles. Actually, I think I'll definitely do it. Um, I want to make sure the phone lasts, though, the battery, so I can do it a while. And people can donate money and get free translations. So, R9000... 333, your name in Spanish is Era Nueve Mil Tres Tres Tres. Alright, what do y'all think? Should it still be burped? It's been going like 45 minutes now. Or about 50 minutes. And that is definitely very full. It's higher than it should be, so that's unfortunate. Yeah, I think it's overfilled. I, de I definitely think it is. Because on here, you can see it's well above the max line, but I didn't know about that. And what the hell am I going to do about it? How am I going to drain it? Okay, I'll, I'll burp it another few minutes, and then I'll turn the engine off and uh, just hang out for a while. Yeah, everything gets spent hundreds of dollars lately. I'm lucky. Things are working out okay. I got more money coming in. I'm going to call my bank. I called them already, but they said I got to wait until my next payment's due to get some kind of assistance from them. My credit card, financial hardship and all that. You can do that with your bank, by the way, and you should because they make billions and billions of dollars off you if they're a big bank because the other option is I won't still let it go for a few minutes definitely took a bump on the head a little shake to the head Damn allergies. Always takes a while for the Claritin to kick in. It, <sighs> sneezing like crazy today. I don't like doing that in public. I know it's, you know, annoying to people. How's the battery doing? Eh, it's doing all right. <sighs> it's not leaking any more radiator coolant. That's good. So it's not leaking from the engine. Still bubbles coming out, that's good to see. An actual bubble, not just the vibrating, which is what you're seeing, but like an actual bubble just popped out. Let's see if I catch another one. It may be all burped out, I don't know. Oh uh, yeah, a little, little one came out. Let's see. Yep, saw another one there. But the bubbles are getting much smaller and less frequent. Before, they were really big. So I'll let that go another few minutes. to how late the sun is out. I'm in, I was inside McDonald's and thinking, you know, it's like, it's 
the end of the day because I've been up for a while and I'm not seeing the sunlight, even though you can see it out the window, but I'm not looking at it. I was looking at my laptop, writing. <coughs> Damn allergies. And uh, I come out and I'm like, wow, it's still <coughs> daylight. I hope it's better in Los Angeles, the pollen and everything. Okay, another few minutes, like five minutes, and I'll say I'm good to go. I'll just shut the... <coughs> but at least another good sign. Right here, I'll show you. Car's not overheating. Temperature's good. Yesterday, that needle was going way up when I idled the car. Now, I think it does seem to do that more if I drive it for a while and then I idle it. But for now, okay, it's not. And we'll see what the real test will be after a few days of driving. Thanks, Yvonne. Yeah, that's what I've heard too about Los Angeles and California, drier air or something. I don't know. <laughs> Mad scientist, and I went around to different auto parts stores. I don't know why he had me get all this stuff. He said I could take it back if I don't need it, because I may not need it. At least this is a good wire to have to jumpstart the car. I could have been using this, but uh, he said I could take it back. I hate taking stuff back. I hate the indignity of it and not knowing if I'll be able to return it. I didn't. I don't know what I have all this stuff for. Fine. I know he did something with this earlier, testing the car, so if I learn about that and if I need it, Good, fine, I'll just keep it. And this is the starter relay, which is what the mad scientist is gonna put in, and he says this is what's not working on the car, and this is what will get it to work. You see it's got four prongs, it goes un right under the steering wheel, under the dashboard. I'm, I'm going to need to go to Dollar Tree and get more tissues. Uh, maybe I'll go there tonight. 14 people. Click like, everybody. Thanks for joining. Oh, I definitely want to stream some of the drive. Not while I'm driving, because I don't like doing that. It's kind of stressful. Um, I want to focus on driving. And uh, also, it, the bat car, the the phone can overheat easily. You know, it's trying to get a connection as I'm driving. That that's all. all but um, I'd rather just uh, you know stop at the end of the day or something and live stream then or whatever. Maybe I'll have time to film and edit. But I'm thinking I won't have a lot of time because I got a lot of ground to cover. It's going to be like a five day drive. If I drive 500 miles a day, that's going to be about eight hours driving a day or more. My head is still sore from falling, but fortunately I didn't hit my head on the ground. I just hit my shoulders hard and it shook my head. So hopefully I'll feel better in a couple days. All right, uh, it's been about five minutes. Let me take a look at another, what? Take another look. Fifteen people, click like everybody. Thanks for joining. I'm, I definitely wanted, oh. I want to do a translations for donations live stream this month where I tran I give you Spanish translations and you give me donations for them and I'll just translate what you want. All right, so again, this tip is the radiator hose is right here. You can squeeze that, help get some of the, you can see the fluke coolant rise and get some of the air out of there. It looks like I may, it's, it's getting fairly warm, but it's not scaldingly hot. It's good to wear the glove, otherwise I couldn't do this. Get some more air out of there. Wow, that's hot. And uh, I think that's about it. I'll put the cap on there in a minute. And uh, let me just hang out.
I don't even know what states I'll be driving through. I'll be driving through the whole country, but fortunately, it's basically one road that, um, one interstate that goes through the whole country that I'll be driving on. So, give this another minute or so. This would be safe. Yeah, I see more bubbles coming out. That's just the engine vibrating, but if you see an actual bubble, that's that's what's, you know, important. I don't see bubbles coming out, so I think it's mostly... Bro I've done this for about now an hour and 45 minutes today, because I did it earlier. And uh, still nothing coming out of there. All right, what do you say, everybody? I think that's pretty good, so... Yeah, I've been doing this for almost an hour now. I did it an hour earlier today, so... The car's not overheating. I'll go ahead and uh, shut down the engine, or shut it down like a computer. Um, turn it off. Put the... radiator cap back on and again you don't want to pull over and just take it off if the car's overheating the you the coolant will scald you and even whether it's overheating or not when you're driving you got to let it cool down and then put it on but for putting it back on not a problem there you go It's not going to overheat. I'll, I'll see in the next week or two before I go to California. If all goes well, all goes according to plan. I don't know how long I'll be there. That's a day-by-day -day process. Um, you know, seeing how well I'm doing there, how well the videos are doing, how much money I'm spending. So those are the important factors. So far, though, it's all coming together, basically, even though it's a little chaotic and I'm spending more money than I want to. All right. That's how you burp the radiator of your car. So I got a little more time if anyone wants me to talk about anything else. Uh, not too much specific to say about the trip to California, other than I'm planning for big stuff. I want it to be very productive, get a lot of work done. I'm gonna get the case for my phone. I want to work a lot, maybe see some movies. Um, and uh, meet a lot of filmmakers, writers, actors, all that kind of stuff. Meet people that I know. See some new people. And uh, my mom, slowly, she seems to be feeling better about it. Because really, I don't know how long I'll be there. Could be a week. If it's not very productive. A month. We'll see. And probably I'll, I'll, I'll get an oil change before I come back, too. Oh, did I manage to convince Moy Standing to film my mom? Well, we talked, and he agreed to. So, I talked to my mom, she agreed. She said he can come over and film any time, day or night, which she doesn't even say that for, about me. But um, the question is, will Moy Standy follow through? He's, uh, he's, kind, he's kind of, um, you know, absent a lot of times, does his own thing, so we'll see. I'm gonna try and get my mom to call him. Sometimes I'm hoping to film with him before I go to Los Angeles, but like I said, he, he doesn't always show up or doesn't always respond, so, and show up too. Like he'll make plans and then say he overslept. So, uh, sorry, not 
trying to put too much of his business out there. I don't think he'll mind too much me saying that just because it's not a big deal. Who cares? But yeah, we'll see. I'm trying to get him to because I would like people to be able to see videos with my mom while I'm in Los Angeles. You'd like to drive to Spain? <sighs> what time is it? It's only 7.14? Cool. So yeah, his chewing tobacco review. I've seen he did a, a, maybe a couple of those. I, th I forget if he did more than one. But yeah, look at all this pollen on my car. Oops. I don't know if you can see it that well. Maybe this angle's better. Yeah, you can see it better. All the yellow pollen. That's the stuff that my allergies uh, get activated by. Grizzly wintergreen, huh? And again, the headlights are nice and um, restored. You don't want to drive around with dim headlights. It's not safe. It looks like you don't care about your car, which I realize there's a lot that's not right with my car. But um, it's really great. That rubbing compound works perfectly, and it's only six bucks. I used to spend so much more on um, Rain-X uh, headlight treatments that cost like 25 bucks, and you get this material and bottles like this big and then you can only use it like once before it's all you know used up and dirty and ruined so this rubbing company is better you rub it on wipe it off it takes off all the dirt with it so i don't you know want that to be a problem i want to be able to see clearly and other people to see my car clearly because there's a lot of bad drivers everywhere transportation. It'd be so amazing if I could take a high-speed train to Los Angeles and be able to get around town there and if we actually had, uh, you know, free um, public shelters and housing. I don't know if I'd want a public shelter, but housing for people. We actually, you know, share the wealth in this country. A lot of horrible things about the Los Angeles uh, homeless situation. Over like 35,000 people homeless there. That's just staggering. And it's uh, shameless on the part of the rich and powerful there and a waste that people don't want to help them and put them in housing. It's so much cheaper uh, than um, trying to police them and uh, making it illegal to sleep in your car, all kinds of selfish, hypocritical stuff. They're willing to make people homeless, they just don't want to see them in their neighborhoods afterwards. Predatory landlords, predatory, predatory um, you know, housing practices, uh, all kinds of stuff. And, and just plain old greed, you know. Rich don't want to pay their taxes to have to go and help the homeless. Oh, excuse me. Don't want good paying jobs, all that kind of stuff. So I'll keep going for a few more minutes here and then I'm going to get back to work, back to writing. Got my video done for today. I wasn't sure what to do for a video today. I just wasn't feeling that sharp today. So I'm glad I got this done and actually got something done I needed to do. Yeah, not in my backyard. That's where they are. NIMBYs, right. In Venice. In, there, in Venice is like a neighborhood in uh, California, I guess. Tons of homeless there. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the residents there, they're so great. Like, the arrogance is astounding. You can read articles. It's like, how do these people not hear themselves? These people raised $200,000 to legally block a homeless shelter from being built in their neighborhood. Because they say, oh, it's so inappropriate to have a homeless shelter here. It's such a rich neighbor. They literally said, like, it's such a, you know, um, high, um, it's such a high value neighborhood. Like, you're going to have homeless people overflowing here, and it's going to be a public health hazard. So if, and the excuse is, like, I would love to be able to question them and say, okay, so just uh, for clarification, um, you don't think the homeless would be better served by having housing? Uh, like, you think they're better off in the street? I don't understand. You're not in the street, but you want other people to remain in the street. And it's inappropriate. I can't believe the word inappropriate. That's what was in the article. To have a shelter in their neighborhood. They were like, what are they thinking having a shelter in our neighborhood when it's such a high income, like, area? Because it's going to, what, bring down property values? You don't want to see homeless people around? They're worried homeless people are going to be out on the street? Like, it makes so much more sense. It is, I mean, it's so, sh and aside from all this, this, you know, getting into the details of the costs of it, it's so inhumane. 
It's like, okay, well, you're willing to drive up the housing costs. You're willing to make it so people can't afford homes. Um, why don't you deal with the consequences of it? How can you live with yourself if you're willing to do this? Because ultimately, you're paying into the system, raising property values. And that's what it was. He was like saying the property values are so high here. It's so irresponsible to have a homeless shelter here. What a, a coward. Yep, environmentally, the state's in disaster too. Drought, fires, a lot of problems. Pollution apparently is better now, but... Um, yeah, they swear to do something, never do. They were supposed to build a high-speed train like 40 years ago. Never did. All kinds of problems there. So hopefully I can bring some attention to that. I'm not making any promises because it's not something like you set out with a goal. It's just you do, you know, do well. And whatever happens emerges from that as far as if it brings attention to it or gets people, you know, more motivated to help out and to put pressure on people to help the homeless there. Because that is so inhumane to not want to house people when you have the ability to. Yeah, right. I mean, it's, it's so transparent. Uh, I'd love to be able to ask, like, so to be clear... The reasons you're saying there shouldn't be a homeless shelter in your neighborhood are not the same ones that other people use when they merely just don't want homeless people around. You're saying it because you have legitimate concerns about the property values. <coughs> but if you're concerned about, um, excuse me, about homeless people uh, hanging around there, you'd be concerned that they don't have a shelter to stay in. And they said, oh, they didn't do a proper environmental impact study for the shelter, too. BS, like they're worried about the impact of a bunch of rich white people moving in. Aww. Like they worry about that every time. Oh, my face is all, like my lip and everything is all um, uh, being uh, uh, rubbed raw by the tissues. Been blowing my nose all day. It's just a horrible, selfish, hypocritical situation. Gotta blow my nose again. Uh -huh. Oh, man. Damn allergies. Yeah, a lot of them get kicked out. It happens in D.C. You can read articles about it from, like, three weeks ago. Or, or more recently than that, in Washington, D.C., about people um, being told they have to uh, evacuate the homeless camps and tents that they've made and that the police and sanitation workers are going to come by and clear everything out. Yeah, it makes no sense. If you're going to spend all that much money on policing homeless people, uh, you've got a lot more money you can spend on housing them and on a humane solution. This country's priorities are so screwed up. Socialism for the rich and rugged individualism for the poor. Hey, that's a good idea, yeah. Pave over the golf courses and provide housing for the homeless. Good idea. Oh. Oh, excuse me. I'm still waiting, by the way, to see when the mad scientist is going to be able to put in the starter relay on my car. And uh, hopefully the coolant's okay. If it's too high, I don't know how to lower it, like get some out. I don't know if he has a solution for that. I, I'll look it up. But I think there might be too much coolant as well. But at least now I know it needed a lot more coolant. Regardless of where it is now, it did need more and it was overheating and it needed burping. So I have basically never burped the car. I've done it before like for like three minutes and I got impatient. So today I did it for about an hour and 45 minutes total. I did it for about uh, 45 minutes earlier today. And they say, you. I think I read like you should do that twice. So that's good, I got it out of the way. Really important before I go to Los Angeles and drive 2,500 miles. Antes conduzco 2,500 millas. Conduzco o manejo. Click like, everybody. That helps the video out. we got 14 people here. Click like because I'm going to need a lot of help getting to Los Angeles, going there, and then uh, 
I'll be filming. I'll have to stop at places I can sleep, like wherever. Uh, wherever places, 24-hour businesses, Walmarts, uh, truck stops, excuse me, on the way over. I'll try and make good progress every day and hopefully arrive there early May. So you'll all see. It's coming together. I'm working on it. A lot more coming. And then I got a lot of work planned when I'm there. I'm not just going there and just trying to hang out and do nothing. The moment I get there, I want to be ready to start working. And I'm talking to people there to get ready to do that. So in a way, this is years in the making. And you'll see. You, by the way, you're going to be very excited if it comes to plan who I'm going to work with. That's all I'll say. Because if it doesn't, and if I can't work it out, if I can't make it there, well, obviously, then that'll be disappointing. Not looking forward to the drive. Driving stresses me out. Driving long distances on roads I don't know. But I'm literally going to be going on one road across the country. I'm so grateful for that. No big turns, no big, you know, exits, no whatever. It's one interstate across the entire country. I get on that interstate, I go to L.A., I get off it. And then I get to where I'm going in L.A. The last time I was in L.A., uh, it was, I think, 2014. I used to shoot videos for an entertainment slash fashion agency. And uh, I was there shooting some fashion show. I used to travel with them. Oh, excuse me. Is that the road, I-40? I forget, it's like 40 or 70. I can't remember which one. Yeah, I'm thinking, you know, already, maybe these cardboard panels on the windows, it's going to be a bit, a lot of work because I'm going to need to get it out of my trunk each time. It's not really practical to keep it in my car. There's not enough space to have. It's going to look bad, a garbage bag in here. So I'm going to have to get them out of my car, the panels, put them all in, make sure they stay in, and sleep that way and then in the morning take them all out I may just want to get blackout curtains and just pin them up here with whatever clothes pins to these oh that might work but it's got to go all the way to the end of the window so either clothes pins or um, attach velcro along here <clears throat> excuse me uh, damn I'm going to have to look into that I'll see how it works tonight I'm going to try and sleep with them in tonight but attach velcro and that might be the easiest way. Just put on the blackout curtains. Yeah, check though. I hate checking weather. I hate planning stuff. I hate doing all. I just want to, you know, just feel it out. Just go. But yeah, I definitely, I got a plan for this. And I, I made the decision to go, and then I started planning it. But it's going fine so far. Except I'm spending a lot on my car. Yeah, the creepy stories about there. Well, I'll try and go to, you know... Uh, well-populated place. And also, I have my guard up when I'm out. Someone's looking at me or trying to act like my friend or something. I'm immediately, you know, they'll be able to see, like, I'm not uh, trying to act like their friend. You know, without being too harsh or too rude, you know, escalate. Just let them know, you know, politely but firmly. Uh, like a bouncer would. Seventeen people here. Cool. Click like everybody again. I'm um, getting ready to go to Los Angeles. Um, what day is today? What's the date? The seventeenth. About um, almost about exactly two weeks. I'm trying to plan on being there. I'm talking to people, making sure my money's in order, I'm trying to save money. And then it's going to be about a five day drive because I figure I'll cover about five hundred miles a day. Maybe one day I'll try and cover extra. But for the most part, I'll be driving 500 miles a day, I think. And I've done that before. Um, and that's about an eight-hour drive to get 500 miles. I'm going to follow the speed limit the whole way. No way I'm risking, you know, anything unsafe or getting pulled over by the police. Drive the speed limit. Be cautious. Say following distance. Um, and, you know, I'll stay in the right lanes if I feel the left lanes are going too fast and I don't want to go that fast. And also, this car does not get up to speed very easily and maintain a good speed. Anyways, it's just, it's a weak car. It's a low-powered car. I'm always drinking iced tea. Never drink soda. Trying to be re really healthy, which is sort of working out. 
Yeah, I don't want to pay for campgrounds, though. I've looked into that. Uh, I just don't want to. No, I wouldn't have stayed in L.A. back then. I had no option to. There was no... It, it was... I was traveling for work. Um, but also, I've had so much happen here. Um, and with videos and with my mom that I would have never want to missed out on. And I'm only going to be there... Who knows? Well, maybe I'll be there a month. We'll see how it goes. Depends on the people I'm working with. Um, just... Uh, you know, it depends how much progress I'm making there with uh, writing and meeting people and saving money. So all that. But uh, I've got good. Now I've got a much better idea of where I'll be there, where I can sleep in my car, how I'm going to sleep in my car, what time and everything. Uh, excuse me. Also, it's nice that it's three hours earlier than here. So even though I go to bed late here, there, you know, again, it always changed. But I mean, you, you just changed with, uh, you know, where you are, but um, hopefully I can go to bed early and get up early and just go and get my day started early and get everything. This is the traffic there is terrible, too. So, you know, I'm trying to be very conscientious of where I go, how much time I spend on the road, not trying to drive a ton. I'm going to drive a lot in L.A. I've already actually looked up one area I'm going to be in. It looks like I may have to drive a ways to the gym every day, so... I'm just hoping to, you know, make the best of that and uh, try and avoid, you know, really well-trafficked roads if that's possible. Um, I will say, though, I, you know, I've been in L.A. driving around a lot. Traffic's no worse than D.C. <laughs> no worse than around, not just D.C., Arlington, Fairfax, Falls Church, everywhere around here. Woodbridge, Springfield, Annandale, it's all just as bad, if not worse here. But L.A. is a city begging to have great public transportation. They would benefit so much from it. Great, you know, housing infrastructure, energy infrastructure. Um, so much of the state is so progressive and forward-looking about what they're doing. And yet, they have the most dumbest, the dumbest cynical policies about dealing with the homeless, public transportation, how they get water. Um, although that's a difficult one. But all kinds of stuff that they should be, you know, way ahead, you know, very much, you know, uh, like leading the way on. 16 people here. Cool. A lot of people. I was going to leave earlier, but now there's all these people here. Click like everybody helps the channel out. Phone's doing all right with the portable charger. Got 51% on the phone. It only went down from like 59. It was going so fast without the charger on there. I burped the car, the radiator, I think pretty successfully. So hopefully the car won't overheat now and it's good to go, but I'll see in the next week or two how it goes. I don't know if I put too much coolant in there. I very well may have, um, or it was already in there in the other reservoir, in which case I may want to figure out how to get it out. Right, exactly. And that's links. Yeah, links. Um, what you're saying is right. It's like the city planners were designing the roads. They never considered the fact the population would grow. That's not just true of LA, it's probably true of a lot of the country, definitely true around here. Way more houses, way more people than the roads are meant to handle. And so now we're playing catch up on everything. The metro in DC is terrible, it's always breaking down. They're trying to expand, but it gets shut, uh, either shut down by the cities it's going through, or, excuse me, or it's not well done, it's not safely done. Car, the rail cars go out of commission. Uh, Metro stations are closed for track work because they've been neglected for decades. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been lost. Who knows where? Um, or and you know so much, uh, so many systemic problems in the metro around here. And the traffic is horrible. The roads are horribly designed. And on top of that, you have like tons of ride shares now. Tons of people driving Uber, Lyft. Um, they're trying to play catch up with everything. We've got new toll roads around here. Um, that are very expensive, and it's just never enough. And of course, for people lower income, they're going to be just have to move eventually, or be like me and go homeless. Right? Yeah, it's a little different because the roads have been around for hundreds of years. Yeah, not big enough for cars in a lot of cases. Right.
just trying to relax my head. My head's still hurting from the concussion yesterday. My ears are still ringing a little bit. They always kind of do. I don't notice it most of the time, but uh, they're better. I'm wearing earplugs everywhere, basically. I wear them at McDonald's. I wear them at the gym. Um, pretty much everywhere and I don't use my headphones anymore. Those were the worst. I just wear um, or I just listen to the speakers and fortunately the McDonald's I go to isn't too loud and I don't have to have them that loud to hear and I'm not mixing like very detailed sound like a movie. It's just making sure the audio is okay and at the right levels that I want. Elon Musk, who knows what he's doing. He's he practically canceling that tunnel. He's he. He's kind of, he says a lot of things and then he doesn't follow through with them and he doesn't have good plans for them and he's an, you know, ego-driven uh, guy who's, um, it just, it seems like he's self-destructive as well. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. It's nice to be in the car out of the allergies, uh, out away from the pollen too. Uh, I got to do laundry before I go to Los Angeles. It's going to be like another 15 bucks, 20 bucks or so. Not too bad. Uh, gas, it looks like it's only going to be about $200 the whole way there. Maybe a little more. Um, especially because my catalytic converter is out. So it's not processing fuel as efficiently. But that can wait until my next inspection in like a year and a half. Um, if I even have the car that long. Maybe I'll get rich by then. Eh, I'm not worried about that. Who knows? You're in Kentucky? Cool. Creelsboro. Never even heard of that. Um, click like, everybody. Helps the video out. Uh, excuse me. So the gas is not going to be too bad. I'm going to try and eat all my own food that I have, you know, the whole way there. Maybe I'll buy a little bit of food, but... Um, and I just got to make sure at the end of every day I've got a place I can sleep and then go to the gym and shower the next day or a truck stop. If it doesn't cost too much. But that's basically that. And then when I'm in LA, I'll be working on videos a lot. So watch the videos. Watch the channel. Follow me on Twitter. Watch everything I post. Because I'm going to be working with other people too. And um, if I have to, maybe pick a extra work. And then hopefully I can afford to drive home. After however long. A few weeks. A month or so. Maybe two months. Oh, excuse me. Thanks again to R9000 for the donations. He donated, or she, I'm sorry, I don't know, donated $2. Uh, although YouTube takes like 30% of that. So I'll get like a dollar, what, 65 or something. Still good though. I appreciate it. And tonight, I got to think, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? I know where I'm sleep. I've been sleeping in a different place every night, rotating a lot. Um, oh yeah, and the main thing I was thinking, I want to put up those cardboard, you know, uh, the cardboard blacked out in the windows and see how tedious and cumbersome that is or not. And also, actually, the thing you were talking about with them heating up and then smelling in the car and get that it would be a problem when I wake up. So that I really have to go to bed earlier and make sure that it's not getting hot by the time I take those out. So, um, yeah, I want to make sure, um going to bed early, especially in Los Angeles. But like I said, I may just get, and they're not that expensive, blackout curtains and just hang them up in the windows. Uh, that would be so much easier. Um, I'm just hoping it's not much work and I just, it's a way to do it. I, I guess glue on Velcro or I don't care if I screw stuff in. I don't care if I damage this, whatever, but uh, just or something, some way to make it very easy. And, um, or, or clothespins, but there's nothing you see on here. It's like nothing to attach clothespins to. There's the handles, but it's got to go all the way to the front too, where it's got to cover up the window. And there's nothing to attach clothespins to there. It's all big and round and everything. So, um, I figure all that out. Finally, video's back. Um, I'm eager for the trip. So I'm just calmly waiting. And uh, 
keeping my expenses low and keep working on the videos. I was going to try and film something with my mom today. She couldn't, so it looks like tomorrow we'll do it. And actually, for that reason, I do have to get up pretty early because we're trying to film early. How hard is it to put in this starter relay myself? It's under here. Oh. So it's under there, basically that little panel right here. But I don't exactly know how to do it, and I can't find easily online how to do it. So I don't want to risk doing it myself and then messing something up. I'd rather get my friend to do it and plug something else I should be aware of with the car. But hopefully that's the, that's the major thing. That and the car cooling properly. Get an oil change before I go. And um, I'll be ready to drive there. And then I guess to save time, I might be live streaming daily because I don't necessarily know where I'll be able to film videos, upload. Well, I could do it from my phone. I've done that plenty. And uh, just, you know, being cautious about my safety and trying to plan ahead. Oh, I should let somebody... Well, people know I'm going, but... Uh, anyway, so... I'm getting a lot of good information about where to sleep in L.A. because there's a lot of restrictions, but fortunately there are good people who are fighting to keep it legal to sleep in your car and try and <clears throat> oh, excuse me, advocate for the homeless and uh, make it um, easier to find housing, which the city is going so slowly on. But uh, you know there are people who care and who actually want to help the homeless. It's just an epidemic situation there it's like over 35,000 people are homeless that is not uh 35,000 people who just refuse to get a home or work that is a massive uh structural problem with the city housing being way too expensive not having services for people preventative uh, health care all kinds of stuff and housing why is this such a big mystery or people you know want to scream oh this is uh uh, this is, um, you know, it's like some kind of like, we're the, whatever the propaganda is, they say about social services and uh, making sure people have housing. I don't know if, the, basically it's all a bunch of racist dog whistling for the most part. It's all inextricably linked, the classism and racism. Can't have one without the other. Does anybody want me to keep going? Because I think I'm, I guess I might go, get going soon. Been going for an hour and 40 minutes. Charge my phone again. Do some more writing. Study in Spanish. And then, uh, what was I going to get at Dollar Tree? I forget already. Tissues. And um, hang out and try and go to sleep a little early tonight. And I did try and get up early today. Well, I did manage to do that, even though I was a little tired, because I was like, I got to do it. I, I couldn't fall asleep last night. I was, I don't know what it was. I just had too much energy. Couldn't fall asleep. Yeah. Housing, education, healthcare, and people act like that is, um, yeah, it, like people act like if you have those things, it's going to ruin all our lives. And it's going to, basically, they're screaming, it's going to ruin white people's lives. Um, if, uh, black people and brown people have equal footing with them. That, that's basically what it amounts to. And then they hide behind, oh, it's it's about, uh, you know, like protecting our rights, our, our freedoms or something. And um, it's ridiculous. You saw on Fox News, Bernie Sanders uh, was there having a debate, which I don't support him doing because it legitimizes Fox News. And they, they run Nazi propaganda on there, white supremacist propaganda and fascist propaganda, and um, just hate, pure hate on there. And so even though, yeah, he's giving the platform to some good ideas, it legitimizes their advertisers, gives them ratings, and it makes it easier for them to spread their hate. But uh, he asked, Brett Baer asked, like, who wants Medicare for all? And the audience cheered. And But Fox News, what do they say about it? They scream like Medicare for all is going to ruin your life and it's some fantasy or something. All kinds of horrible stuff to keep people scared. And in order to protect rich people, that's the thing. They don't care about you all out there watching. 
the regular old, you know, retired person who's living on a pension, they want you to be scared that black and brown people are somehow going to come for you in order to get their health care. It is absurd. It's pathetic. And a lot of them really would benefit from so many similar things like Medicare for all. Well, I think I'm going to get going, everybody. That's as good a place to stop as any. I'm going to uh, charge my phone and then, um, yeah, I want to get to uh, Dollar Tree and find somewhere to sleep tonight. Right, right, right. The che crowd was cheering. Yeah. So it's not just, see, they act like it's all, you know, um, it's propaganda from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Bernie Sanders about this. This is stuff that people actually need because as much as you can try and hype up fear in people over these policies, over social programs and, you know, medic medical care for people, uh, as much as you can try and do that, people know the reality. They desperately need that. They actually need cheap housing and affordable health care or free health care and, you know, free transportation, public transportation, Green New Deal. Um, yeah, ex absolutely. They were shocked that people uh, like that message because they expect people to buy into the fear that basically the real message is they're giving to their audiences. Hey, you poor people and middle class people struggling to watch us millionaires who are funded by billionaires. Um, we need you to keep hating other poor people and immigrants and people of color in order to, uh, um, better, like in order to support us and help us enrich ourselves at your expense. And so people do that. They keep exerting all this momentum and energy to do that. But it's, you see how it's eroding. Um, it's hard for them to maintain because people, uh, for all the propaganda, they're not like, oh, my health care is great. And, um, uh, excuse me, schools are great and transportation is great. Um, people like are glad to hear an alternative to, uh, to the, you know, conservative propaganda saying that um, Medicare for all and free college and good paying jobs are going to destroy your life somehow. And this is part of an insidious agenda. They always try and suggest that the whatever agenda, black, gay, they always try and pin it on somebody to say that the immigrant agenda, um, socialist agenda, they keep trying, it's the same fear they're trying to you know whip up and it, it like you can't exert it over and over again some people will take but some people realize yeah life isn't working out the way it's supposed to um we're clearly being exploited by the rich and so they're glad to hear a message uh that's going to benefit them and stick it to uh arrogant rich people now i'm still not for him going on there he could have done that somewhere else Yeah, but again, their advertisers are running ads on shows that are putting um, hateful ideas in people's minds that are also driving acts of violence. They're helping perpetuate uh, violence from the government against immigrants, against people in other countries where we make war. Um, it's helping uh, foment uh, war against Venezuela and Iran. So it's a lot of horrible things uh, that uh, don't need to happen. Right, yeah, a lot of these people, yeah, you phrase a question a different way that makes it more clear without the fear-mongering and scapegoating of immigrants or whoever else uh, conservatives want to, you know, basically, the pin, you know, like spread white supremacist fear over. Say, oh, they hate white men. That's what you hear all the time being screamed by Tucker Carlson, Mark Levin, Eric Harley, Gary McNamara, Ben Shapiro, um, Laura Ingram, uh, Chris Plant, Larry O'Connell, who's here on uh, WML on the radio, um, is that people hate white men. Well, that's white supremacist propaganda. You can hear that from you, or you can hear it from the, you know, the out and out white supremacists. Uh, anyways, everybody, I should get going. Phone's overheating. Take this. There we go. Take the case off. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hey, now you know how to burp your car.
uh, burp your radiator if it's overheating, especially with Hondas. And um, stay tuned, got a lot more coming. And uh, I will um, probably, uh, hopefully have a video with my mom tomorrow. Um, all right, thanks for watching everybody, bye.